The debate about Blender as industry standard software is now dead. An indie movie called Floor, which was made entirely in Blender, has been sweeping the award circuit recently, culminating in a Golden Globe and an Oscar for the best animated feature. So let's talk about how this little indie movie from Latvia, which was made with a tiny budget, took on the big guys and beat all the major studios to win an Oscar. Before we dive in, just two quick notes. My free Mesh Cleaner add-on has now had almost 4,000 downloads and a bunch of lovely feedback. Thank you to everybody who has donated a few dollars to help support the creation of tools like this. I really appreciate that. Secondly, to celebrate Flo's Oscar win, I've decided to run a 40% flash sale on all of my products. So if you've been wanting to improve your interior modeling skills, now is a good time to grab my interior masterclass course, or maybe you want to level up your modeling in general with the Essential Topology Guide. Use the code FLASH at Gumroad to save 40% until the 21st of this month. You'll find all the links that you need in the description. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Gintz Zilberlotis is a Latvian director who gained some attention with the animated movie Away, which he made by himself in 2019 using Maya. In 2020, he managed to get the funding together to build a small team to work on his new movie project called Floor, which is about a cat surviving in a slowly flooding post-apocalyptic world. He decided to switch to Blender for this so that he could leverage the power of Eevee. The team had a production budget of three and a half million euros. Now that might sound like a lot, but it's actually pocket change for a full length animated movie. For reference, the new Toy Story movie, which is in production, is about 70 times more expensive, which is a budget of about a quarter of a billion dollars. The director, Gintz Zilberlotus, really played into the strengths of Blender to make the production as efficient as possible while using a very small team. Because the movie was being made with Evie, the team could see how the final shots were shaping up from the very beginning. Storyboards were scrapped entirely, which is highly unusual for a full-length feature animated movie. Instead, Gintz started with basic animatics for the scenes and established the motion of the camera positions from inside the 3D world. The animatics could then be built upon to create the final scene. Gintz has said that it was especially useful for him because the movie features a lot of long camera moves following the camera through the scenery. That's often very difficult to translate from a storyboard. Now this really resonates with me because I create a lot of single shot animations as well and I use a very similar workflow. Rather than planning out every shot from the start, I tend to just block out the basic environment and then I use the virtual camera to kind of figure out exactly where the shot placement is going to be, just like you would do on a real set often. So the workflow that Gintz used was to block out the environment very basically, then he would start working on the animations and the lighting and the camera, while the basic block out meshes were sent to another artist who would make a final version of the mesh which was built to the same proportions. That way, the basic block out meshes could just be easily swapped out for the final versions. This means that Gintz could work on directing the action of the shots while all the sets were essentially still being built. The fact that Flo was rendered out with AV meant that they could iterate shots really quickly. It's not uncommon for directors to request a lot of very small changes, such as move this tree a little bit over here, or make uh, this building a little bit larger. In the industry, we call it pixel fucking, right? And it can be very frustrating, not least of all because it takes a long time for anybody to actually see these changes. The director comes in and says, make that car green instead of blue. You have to render everything out and come back maybe a day or two later, and then they can compare the two shots and say, mm, actually, I preferred the first one. But because floor was made in AV, you can make changes render it all out and see within a few minutes exactly what the final shot looks like. It was rendered out in 4K and every single frame took between half a second and 10 seconds to render out. So for more sequences, you're gonna be able to see pretty quickly exactly what the final shot is gonna look like. In fact, while studios such as Pixar and DreamWorks need to have these massive render farms to actually render out the animations, especially these days where it's in 4K, Gintz actually rendered out the entire movie on his own workstation PC that he used to build the scenes in the first place. With water playing such an important role in the story of Flo, 
You might think that they use something like Houdini or Liquid Gen for all the simulation work, but the team often use Blender's own tools combined with a few add-ons such as the $250 Physical Open Waters add-on. They also use several other popular Blender add-ons such as Flip Fluid, which is also for liquids, GeoScatter, which can be used to scatter rocks and plants, and Animation Layers, which allows you to tweak animations on top of the animations you've already built. Gintz and his team skipped traditional compositing entirely. Changes that were needed to the final shots were actually achieved at a shader level instead, so they could be viewed inside the viewport and rendered out exactly as they were seen. Now, this is another thing that I've actually integrated into my own workflow. I don't eschew compositing entirely, but I try to make the viewport render look as close to the final render as I possibly can. It's just really helpful for me when I'm lighting or when I'm trying to set things up, if I actually have an idea of how things are all gonna to look together. So I try to do it as much as possible all at once. That's made a lot easier these days now that the actual compositing that you do inside Blender can be shown inside the viewport as well. It's amazing just how small the team floor actually was. Gins has said that about 15 to 20 people were on the main team, but it was usually just him plus two or three other people at any one time. For instance, him and a few concept artists during pre-production, and then a few modelers when they were actually building the characters and the sets, and then animators when they actually came to give uh, life to the characters. He did a lot of the work himself. He created dozens of hours of the music, apparently, for the soundtrack. Bear in mind that this is a movie with no dialogue, so that's a very important stage in and of itself. And he also did all of the lighting. And so that brings us to today. Floor was released last year, and since then it's won over 50 different awards at various ceremonies and film festivals. It won the Golden Globe for the Best Animated Feature. It was nominated at the last Oscars for the Best International Film, and it won the Academy Award for the Best Animated Feature. It's the first ever Latvian movie to win an Academy Award in general, and it's the first ever indie movie to win a Academy Award for the Best Animated Feature. It's an incredible achievement to knock the big studios like Pixar and Disney and DreamWorks off the top spot and actually get the Academy Award for Best Animated Movie using free software, a tiny team, and comparatively a really small budget. This is a really great achievement. Okay, so where does that leave us then? Well, I think in general we're going to start seeing more studios taking Blender seriously as a tool that they can use to make things like this. This is not just a one-off, it's part of a pattern that we've seen over the last few years. Um, parts of Enter the Spider-Verse were done with Grease Pencil. There was a Oscar-nominated movie called I Lost My Body, which was a French 2D movie, which was also made entirely in Blender. We're starting to see more and more recognition at award ceremonies for Blender, and we're seeing this because studios are using it more and more in their workflow. Hopefully that's going to translate into Blender getting more funding and better tools because what we've seen in the past is when studios start to use Blender, they start to develop their own tools to fit it into their workflow and more often than not, those tools end up getting released and they end up in the hands of everybody. So finally, I just want to say a big congratulations to Gintz and the whole team who worked on this project. I'm sure they're incredibly proud of themselves. They all seem very humble and they've done a spectacular job. I mean, to take on the big studios and give them a bloody nose like this is really incredible, especially when you look at the competition they were up against this year. Like uh, Inside Out 2 was up for the same award and the original movie has already won this award once. Uh, same with Wallace and Gromit. That was another one. Another franchise which has already won the best animated movie before. So the fact that it's beat out movies like that is really incredible. That's just about all I've got to say about that. Remember to check the link in the description to get my free Bash Cleaner add-on. If you want to donate any money towards the development of that, that would be really appreciated. I am actually working on some extra features for that right now. Also, remember that flash sale is on my Gumroad page. You can get 40% off all of my courses using the code FLASH until the 21st of March.